I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, Six Pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Hey, welcome to another review, another Patreon review, this time for David. Thank you so much for that. Thank you to everyone who's joined me on my Patreon. If you're ever interested, certain tiers do you certain things. Feel free to join my Patreon. The link for that is down below. Or you could do directly via PayPal and pretty much request almost any type of video. Review, commentary, movie topic, re-review, what have you. But by PayPal and Patreon, the links to them are down below. If not, no worries. If so, feel free. But David wanted me to talk about a film called Sword of the Valiant, The Legend of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I had never heard of this film. I had no idea what this movie was. It came out in 1984. It's, I guess, loosely, loosely, loosely based on a story, a poem... And then I looked at the cast and I went, Sean Connery and Peter Cushing are in this? And John Reese davies So wait a minute, this is not really sorcery, but based on Teen Arthur in a way, Knights of the Round Table in a way, and you got Sean Connery, Peter Cushing, and John Reese davies from Brady's Lost Art. Now I know why I haven't heard of this film after watching it. Because this film just feels all over the place. It feels like you took a TV show and you just loosely stitched together episodes and edited it down to an hour and something movie. Like hour and was hour and 40, give or take. I can't remember the running time. Because... The teen is pissed off that his knights are too fucking lazy nowadays and the other knights are getting drunk off their ass and so Sean Connery in this fucking Christmas tree outfit glitter and he, Sean Connery looks like a fucking Christmas tree the more I see some Sean Connery movies the more I go dude Leader of Extraordinary Gentleman was not that fucking bad I know you had you had pissed off at the director and you never want to work again, but you did a film called The Avengers where you wore a fucking tear bear suit. That's what it was, pretty much was, a fucking tear bear suit. You did a movie called Meteor that mo where its effects for a good portion was laughable. You did a fucking movie where it said the penis was evil called Zardoz and then you did this fucking movie where you look like a guy in fucking Christmas tree with stuff that looks like fucking antlers if you don't believe me look it up it looks like a fucking Christmas tree glitters and shit and Sean Connery's not bad acting wise but he's really in it he's in the beginning of the film a little bit in the middle and then at the end most of the film is this fucking guy Miles O'Keefe, I believe that was the actor's name. Not much of an actor. He has a haircut that looks like Prince Valiant. You misunderstand me, Prince Valiant. Your movie suck, dick. So Sean Connery is the dream. The dream. Yeah, this sound. This seems like a bad fucking dream. Sean Connery and Christmas Tree. 
Follow me, light bulb. Hey, Christmas tree. He comes in and he challenges the knights a cut for a cut. If anyone could cut my head with one blow, hey, you win. But if you miss, I get one shot. No one wants to do it. The team gets pissed, so he's going to do it. Miles O'Keefe, who he's a... I want to make sure if that's his name. This was not much of an actor, to be perfectly honest. He was not that... Imp I've, I know I've seen him in other stuff. Now I'm thinking I, I'd get in the... Yeah, it's Miles O'Keefe. Okay. And this is the second time this director adapted this story. He did Galen and the Green Knight in 1973. This is the second time. You think if you had a second chance, Stephen Weeks? And funny enough, this was produced by Golden Globus. <laughs> yes, Golden Globus, the guys of Canon Films. This is a 1984 release. And Go Yorm Globus and Menahem Globus. <laughs> oh my God. I guess Stephen Weeks wanted Mark Hamill. But the producers insisted on Miles O'Keefe. I don't know if fucking Mark Hamill would have saved the movie, but he I, he probably would have been better than Miles O'Keefe. He's a regular guy. He's uh, not a stable boy, but how do I how do you describe him? He was a a young squire on the young squire he decides to do it he succeeds and he did a fairly obvious fake head of sean connery but sean connery has magic on his side so the body pits the head up body come to me and pits the head up so technically the Green Knight won, although I, I would go, that's fucking cheating, fuck you. So he's ready to get his head chopped up, Miles of Teeth, but then the Green Knight goes, you know what, you're a young man, you haven't lived life, I'm going to give you a year. And you know what, if you don't want this to happen, within a year you must solve this riddle. If you solve the riddle, you get your life returned. I don't remember the riddle. Let me look it up. I think it says on Wikipedia what the actual riddle was. Which, half the riddle he doesn't even figure out. Other people figure out for him. Where life is emptiness, gladness. Where life is darkness, fire. Where life is golden, sorrow. Where life is lost, wisdom. <clears throat> okay, let me try to figure this out. Where life is emptiness, gladness. Well, I was glad when this movie was over. Where life is darkness, fire. Yeah, I wish the movie had a fire up his ass. Come on, Tannen group. I actually like a lot of your movies, Tannen. Chuck Norris films, Death Wish 3, Cobra. Although, you just say that's more Warner Brothers. But still, Tannen was... Gorn Globe's names were on it. Over the Top, Cyborg. I enjoy those movies. I reviewed those movies. Where life is golden sorrow. Yeah, you feel sorrowful watching this. Especially the score by Ron Deason is an awful fucking score. It's like trying to be synthesizer. So it kind of doesn't work with this night medieval time. And then they repeat it. And it sounds like someone has fallen asleep and it's just, he's trying to get up and he's, he keeps hitting the fucking synth piano. And I, if you don't, go listen to the score, you tell me what the fuck it sounds like. It, it sounds like someone just, oh shit. They're getting drunk and they keep falling. And, yeah, keep, keep playing it. Keep going. Don't stop. Where life is lost, wisdom. Yeah, it'd be wise for you not to watch this shitty movie. <laughs> Why is it shitty? Miles Ateef doesn't work as a lead. It just seems random. It seems just going from point A here, 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 then the movie's over. And then one of the, when he f goes on his journey, one of the things he does is the suit. How does one relieve himself in this tin suit? And then he goes off to take a piss after being given what looks like a can opener. And just like random shit, he chases a unicorn, which disappears in front of him. Then he finds a place with this lady 
who he found out was working with the Green Knight, and food magically appears, and the lady tries to tempt him. Then he goes somewhere, and there's a Black Knight, and they fight. The Black Knight kind of accidentally falls on a sword, thanks to Miles O'Keefe. They bring the knight back to this place. The Black Knight lies, and no one thinks, well, wait a minute, you're, you're saying this guy murdered you. Don't the townspeople think, well, why the fuck would the murderer bring his victim to here? Why would the murderer bring the murderee back here? Think about it. If you kill someone, why would you bring them back instead of leaving them to die or finish the job? But literally, Miles T brings the guy on horseback, hey, he needs better better co attention. And then the guy goes, he murdered me and dies. Wouldn't people go, well, wait a minute. There's something weird going on. No, they lock him up. And you don't really get a sense of the time, because I thought it was like a day, but apparently a shitload of time goes by. Because this lady he meets, who's like a princess or whatever, and then 10 seconds later, the lady gives him this ring that makes him fucking invisible, and then the queen wants to marry the lead, and then the lady goes, oh, I've always loved you. I'm like, always, it's been less than two fucking minutes. It's been two less than two fucking minutes. But the lady goes, I've always loved you. It's been two fucking minutes. I guess time has passed, but I didn't get a fucking semblance of it. Two fucking minutes ago, I've always loved you. Cue the Whitney Houston song. Bullshit. Then him and the prince is trying to steep. Goodbye is said. Now he's in the middle of fucking nowhere. And then we cut back to, Sh to Sean Connery, who is with that lady who was meddling before, who was making food appear. And Sean Connery gets pissed at her and turns into a fucking frog. And all of a sudden, apparently half the year has already been gone. I'm like, really? And you literally have a scene where Sean Connery is looking down in sort of his crystal ball type at Miles O'Keefe as Sean Connery goes <laughs> and blows Miles O'Keefe. I'm like, yeah, this movie can fucking blow me because it just, you don't get a sense of the time. It just seems like just random shit happening. Miles O'Keefe kind of sucks. Just take out the kinda. He sucks. This fucking music, awful music doesn't fucking help matters. Sean Connery embarrassing himself. We're going, or looking like a fucking Christmas tree. And the way I'm describing it doesn't seem like it just, whatever the fuck happens, pops up, happens, the movie. I get this a journey. He's going on a journey. He'll meet different people, different locations. I get that. But here, it didn't feel like it had much of a, natural flow it didn't feel like a natural flow this is this guy who's he's with at the beginning but then he disappears for a good chunk of the film then finally the guy comes back after like we're th almost three-fourths into the movie then the guy comes his buddy comes back <clears throat> And then, okay, now he comes back to the sea, but now everyone's frozen in the city, including the princess. Then the ring he was given, the invisibility ring, he gives it back, and then she's unfrozen. But then he immediately gets captured by a group, which includes Peter Cushing, and some other prince who's fucking uh, lusting after the girl. And then they're going to go chase, and then fights the prince and wins, but then gets captured anyway. And then there's John Reese davies who I think was the father of the, the horny prince. And then John Reese davies he's trying to have some fun and energy, but he's not in the film much. And I swear he disappears in the last half of the movie, like the last chunk of the movie, because I don't remember what the fuck happened to him. Because there's this deep and a battle, and he thinks the girl dies in the fire, but she didn't really die because she's alive. And then the lead, Miles O'Keefe goes to the rival of that asshole prince and decides to fight for him. And then there's a big battle, and then the prince... The asshole, pony prince, and Miles O'Keefe are fighting. 
the horny prince is losing, sets fire with an archer, but then Peter Cushing for some reason goes, no, it should be a fair fight. If he dies, if he dies, he dies. He doesn't say that, but he might as well. If he dies, he dies. But it, more like if he loses, then he loses with some ounce of dignity or honor, what the fuck. I don't remember Peter Cushing disliking this character that much, but oh well. And then we get to and in half the time he doesn't some of the riddle he figures some of it people kind of just have to fucking tell him this is what it means dumbass and then even then it doesn't matter because they still have to have this little Sh Sean Connery and most you still have to have this kind of shitty fight so it was all kind of pointless and then Sean Connery tries to cut the guy's head off but then because of the scarf that the lady gave him it it deflects the axe, I guess. Then the two fight, but it's not even a fight. It's just one slice, then Sean Connery dies and is turned to dust. But then he's kind of laughing as if it was all meant to be all lawn. And then Miles O'Keefe, like the last in death, you get wisdom. So that was the end part of the, of the riddle of the... So I guess that's why Sean Connery's laughing. Like this was all meant to be, I guess. And then, oh, here's the princess. But then she turns to a fucking bird. And then the shitty music happens. As if the synthesizer man was drunk. Or the music itself. Imagine the synthesizer music. Now imagine if the music was drunk. If music was a person. If synthesizer music was a person. And that person was drunk. This is what the synth music sounds like. And I don't remember why the fuck the princess turned to a fucking bird at the end. I guess because it's all meant to be. Maybe she don't go fly to Lady Hawk for all I fucking know. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. Sean Connery in a Christmas tree. Ram ship happening. Pierre Cushing, John Reese Davies wasted in nothing roles. A synth score that sounds like if a, the synth itself was a person and sounds fucking drunk. You go home, you're too drunk. He is challenged by all, defeated by none. A remarkable man. Fighting the treachery around him. Leave the wretch to his miserable end. Always courageous. Forward into battle! Always victorious. Tomorrow I ride out to meet the Green Knight. The ultimate challenge awaits him. We have an appointment at the Green Chapel before the sun goes down. You've had your cut. The game is over. I make the rules, boy! I make the rules! Sean Connery and Miles O'Keefe in Sword of the Valiant, an epic tale of a legendary knight, a knight called Sir Gawain. Miles O'Keefe, he sucks as a lead, he doesn't have charisma, he doesn't have the it factor, he doesn't have a presence, the action scenes are nothing remarkable, the directing... This is your second try adapting the story, buddy, and this is what you did? You didn't hear that, but maybe I can go for one more. <coughs> That's what I feel about this movie. Fuck this movie. Fuck this up his ass. Thank you once again, David, for the request. See you guys later. Fuck this Christmas tree wearing bitch.